Besties, we are diving into cell mediated immune system, AKA your body's undercover hit squad that doesn't just detect danger, it hunts it down and deletes it from the group chat. Intracellular invaders, handled. Cancer cells, sniped. Precision and drama, always. Let's get started. All right, besties, we've made it to the final showdown, the last ditch effort your body has to fight against pathogens that refuse to play fair. By now, you know that your innate immune system is your first line of defense. They are the bouncers that keep out unwanted guests. We also know that your adaptive immune system is like the archer squad, launching antibodies to neutralize threats in your body's fluids. Well, what happens when all those systems fail? When viruses, bacteria, or even cancer cells make it past our other defenses and start hijacking your body from the inside. That's when we unleash this elite warriors of the immune system known as T cells. This is our cell mediated immunity. And this is where the real fight begins. Antibodies are powerful. They can neutralize toxins, flag invaders for destruction and prevent infections from spreading. But there's one major limitation to antibodies. They can't enter our cells. So here's what's happening inside of our body. Number one is that we have a virus that's going to enter a healthy cell, slipping past all of our external defenses. Once they're inside this cell, they're gonna to start to hijack its machinery. They're they're going to force the production of more viruses like a biological factory. And then the cells are going to be unidentifiable. These infected cells look completely normal on the outside. It's still part of your body, so antibodies can't recognize it as a threat. Imagine a criminal running from the cops. As long as they're out in the open, officers can chase them down, tackle them, and arrest them. But if the criminal slips inside a locked building and disguises themselves as a worker, the police are stuck outside and they're powerless. This is exactly what happens with viruses. They hide inside our own cells, they blend in, and they avoid detection. And at this point, antibodies are useless. That's why we need to have more aggressive, specialized unit of cells to go inside that cell to take out the invader. And that's where our T cells step in. So let's start with some quick facts when it comes to our T cells. Where are they made and how are they trained? T cells are born in the bone marrow, but they mature in our thymus, hence the T in T cells, T in thymus. Think of the thymus as a military boot camp where the strongest T cells survive. During their training, T cells undergo strict screening. Those that can't recognize enemies correctly are eliminated. This will help prevent them from attacking normal, healthy cells, although sometimes things go wrong like in autoimmune diseases where they're gonna attack it anyways. So how do they actually function? Unlike B cells, T cells don't release antibodies. Instead, they directly attack infected or abnormal cells like a SWAT team breaching a building and eliminating threats inside. They patrol your blood, lymphatic systems, and tissues, ultimately scanning for signs of infection or cellular mutations. So why are these cells so important? T cells are your last line of defense. They handle infections that antibodies can't touch, like viruses hiding inside your own cells or cancer cells multiplying out of control. Without them, your immune system would be blind to these hidden dangers, leaving you completely defenseless against certain infections. The first kind of T cell that we come across is the helper T cells known as CD4+. They are the master commanders. These helper T cells are the generals of your immune system. These guys don't do the actual fighting themselves. Instead, they run an entire immune response, making sure everyone is where they need to be. When a dendritic cell or macro presents an antigen, these helper T cells are going to detect the enemy and sound the alarm. They're going to release cytokines, which are chemical messengers that are going to activate and direct the immune response. Next up, they're going to call in reinforcements. They're going to activate B cells, prompting them to start producing antibodies to fight infections in the blood and the tissues. They're also going to activate cytotoxic T cells by instructing them to hunt down and kill any infected or cancerous cells. And they're also going to boost up our macrophages, making them more aggressive at engulfing pathogens 
and cellular debris. The other cool thing that they do is they create memory cells for the future. Once an infection is handled, some helper T cells turn into memory T cells, ensuring that the immune system remembers the enemy and can react faster the next time. But here's why they're crucial. Without helper T cells, the adaptive immune system would collapse. This is why HIV and AIDS is so deadly. The virus specifically targets helper T cells shutting their immune system down entirely. Without them, B cells don't get activated, cytotoxic T cells don't get instructions, and macrophages don't get the boost that they need. No helper T cells means we're not gonna have an immune response. And we talked about them a little bit before, but now we're gonna talk about those cytotoxic T cells, also known as CD8+, plus the assassins. These guys are our immune systems trained Killers, there are special forces, our hitmen, our snipers, whatever metaphor you want to use, their one job is simple. They identify compromised cells and they destroy them immediately. So let's talk about their job. What do these cytotoxic T cells do? Number one is they're going to hunt down infected cells. Viruses hide inside our own cells, making them invisible to antibodies. So what cytotoxic T cells do is they scan every cell's ID badge. Remember we talked about before that MHC1 protein? They're going to scan all those to see who looks a little suspicious. If a cell shows signs of viral infection or cancer, these cytotoxic T cells are going to look into it. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to deliver a lethal hit. So once they identify an infected or cancerous cells, they don't waste time. They inject toxic enzymes known as perforin and granzymes, which blow holes in the infected cell's membranes, triggering optosis. And the last thing they're going to do is they're going to move on to the next target. After they eliminate one cell, cytotoxic T cells detach and continue their patrol, hunting down for more threats. But how do cytotoxic T cells know which cells are loyal citizens and which ones have gone rogue? The answer, as we talked about before, is that major histocompatibility complex protein, these self-ID badges that every cell wears. Every nucleated cell in your body carries these protein badges on their surface, displaying samples of what's inside. Why does this matter? Because healthy cells are going to have normal MHC displays. If a cell is doing its job appropriately, these MHC proteins are going to display as normal. They're healthy, they're self proteins, which tells the immune system everything's fine here, just get to moving along. However, when it comes to infected or cancerous cells, they're gonna have an altered MHC1 display. If a cell is hijacked by a virus or it's mutated because of cancer cells, the MHC1 is going to start displaying foreign or abnormal proteins. Basically, they're waving a red flag saying, help, I'm compromised. Your immune system has two types of MHC badges, each playing a different role in identifying threats. We're going to start with class one, which is the help me signal. So this is going to be found on every nucleated cell inside your body, except for red blood cells. Normally, it displays self proteins, basically a status report saying I'm healthy, don't attack me. If a virus hijacks the cell, the infected cell is going to start displaying viral proteins on its MHC1 badge. This is going to signal those cytotoxic T cells to scan recognize the threats and initiate the kill sequence. These MHC class ones is like a factory inspection system. Every cell has to show a sample of what it's producing to the immune system. If a factory is working properly, it displays safe approved products. If a factory starts making weapons instead of legal products, then security known as our cytotoxic T cells are going to shut it down immediately. And then we have our MHC1 class two, which is the look what I found cells. So who has these? Any professional antigen presenting cells, also known as APCs, like our macrophages, dendritic cells, and our B cells are going to have these. What they do is that these MHC1 class 2s are going to display antigens that are found and engulfed from outside the cell. These guys are going to attract our helper T cells, and they're going to coordinate the immune response to attack the invader. MHC class 2 is like a detective presenting evidence to the court. These antigens antigen presenting cells are going to show pieces of a captured invader. You can think of it kind of like their mugshot. They're going to show these to those helper T cells, which in turn are then going to initiate some backup. So your immune system's job is simple. Identify what's you, 
and what's not you. They're going to attack only the foreign invaders like viruses, bacteria, and cancer cells, and they're gonna leave your healthy cells alone. But sometimes things do go horribly wrong. Instead of fighting infections, the immune system sometimes can make mistakes. They may mistake normal healthy cells for threats, leading to chronic inflammation, tissue damage, and debilitating diseases. Welcome folks, to the world of autoimmune diseases. You can think of it as your security system kind of going haywire. Instead of only targeting the burglars, it starts attacking innocent people inside the house. Now, every time a normal cell walks through the door, the alarm systems are going to blare and the attack dogs are going to be unleashed. This is exactly what happens with autoimmune diseases. One common example we see a lot is type 1 diabetes. Cytotoxic T cells target and destroy the insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas. This means that your body cannot produce insulin leading to high blood sugar levels and severe metabolic imbalances. But why is this dangerous? Without insulin, your body can't regulate blood sugar leading to fatigue, weight loss, extreme thirst, and long-term organ damage. That's why type 1 diabetes needs insulin injections for life because your immune system has wiped out their ability to make it. Another common example is multiple sclerosis. T cells attack the myelin sheet, the protective covering around our nerves. Myelin is kind of like this rubber coating on electrical wires. It insulates nerve signals and keeps them flowing smoothly. But when myelin is damaged, signals between the brain and the body become disrupted leading to muscle weakness, vision problems, and loss of coordination. So why is this situation dangerous? With MS, it's going to cause progressive nerve damage, leading to muscle weakness, difficulty walking, and even paralysis in more severe cases. There's no cure for this, but there is treatments like immunosuppressants that are going to help slow down the immune system's attack. However, now your body can't fight infections, so really it's not great either way. And then we've got that good old rheumatoid arthritis. T cells are going to trigger an excessive inflammatory response at your joints. Instead of just healing injuries, the immune system stays in attack mode, causing chronic swelling, pain, and joint destruction. Over time, the cartilage is going to wear away, causing permanent joint deformities and disabilities. Patients are often going to need very strong anti-inflammatory drugs or even joint replacement surgeries to manage the damage. So what's the solution? We have regulatory T cells, also known as our peacekeepers. So if T cells can attack the wrong targets, what keeps them in check? That's where these regulatory T cells come into place. They're like the brakes of your immune system. What they're going to do is they're going to tell cytotoxic T cells when to stop attacking. They're going to prevent excessive inflammation and they're going to reduce the risk of autoimmune reactions. If regulatory T cells aren't working properly, your immune system never gets the message to stop. So this can lead to a lot of chronic inflammation, pain, swelling, fatigue, organ damage when it comes to your heart, your lungs, and your brain as well as more severe autoimmune diseases. All right, I know that was really heavy, but let's go ahead and do some practice questions to test your knowledge of everything we've learned here.
And that best sees is how your body's last line of defense, known as cell-mediated immunity, keeps you alive. T-cells are the elite warriors of your immune system, but as we've seen, when they lose control, the consequences can be devastating. As always, if this video helped you in some way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where you can get access to this PowerPoint as well as any other goodies that are found in the store. And as always, I'm gonna catch you in the next video.